All right, so we're out here today. You're gonna to do some further diagnosis on the Ram. I've been realizing that it's still pretty hard to start it, partially due to the fact the battery that's in here is ancient and it needs to be replaced. Um, so I've been jumping it with the Durango and the other reason I think either the old fuel filter might be a little bit clogged and it's slowing fuel delivery up to the carburetor and making it a little bit harder to start. Not to mention it's like 15 degrees up here in Rochester and yeah, it's, it's freaking cold. Um, still waiting on my house and my new garage. I hate having to use a parking lot to work on my stuff, but it is what it is. So uh, we're also going to pull the plugs, see what they look like, and hopefully none of them are fouled, and then check for vacuum leaks around the carburetor, because that might be another reason why it's rough to start and then it stalls out um, as you come to a stop. So I don't have my voltmeter out here because um, it's lost somewhere in one of my boxes. So I'm using my power probe. This thing is freaking awesome if you've never seen one before. You'll be able to test. Uh, you can either push power to or check for grounds for connections and stuff. So with the power probe I can still tell. All right now I plugged it in. What do we got? 12.6. So it's actually not a terrible reading on the battery. 12.6 um, volts should be enough to be able to get it cranking. Uh, you know, 12.6, 12.7 around there after it's been sitting for a night recharging. So it's really not terrible. However, there are further things that you can test on a battery just because it has a 12.6 volt reading. The load that it might be able to put out, I forget exactly the science behind it, but I know that there's other things that can go wrong with the battery, even if it reads a good voltage that it doesn't just have the, the power behind it to start a car or a truck. So overall though, it might not be bad. Alright, so it's a 13 sixteenths. Don't have a spark plug socket for it, so I'm using an impact. It'll work nonetheless. Put the socket down there, and we'll just hand thread the plug out. I'm hoping that I'm not going to be seeing a lot of buildup on them. and I can see there's a little bit of rust on the bottom of the, the base of the plug that's partially just indicative of how long they've been in here but might not be mean that they're bad so let's see okay so there we are it's not got a lot of uh, build up on it of carbon if anything it's pretty white and clean so it could be running um, a little bit lean but uh, and if it has a vacuum leak that might make sense to it but it's not a bad looking spark plug, not terrible. So let's see what the other ones look like. All right, so now we're gonna pull off the number two spark plug. Let's see what she looks like. Here's, a, here's our number two cylinder plug. And here's number four, similar. Both not too bad looking, so we're gonna Organize those up top on the air cleaner. Always love the the nice solid snap that these plug wires make when you pop them off. Just love that. Just one of those car things. So now let's see what these ones here look like. Number six and eight. Oh, number eight because it's easier to reach from this angle. Not too bad looking either. They're all looking pretty similar so far, which is good to have consistency in an engine. Uh, it's telling me so far <laughs> that we're not looking at uh, a lot of difference between each cylinder. Right, taking out number six. And there we go. Again. Pretty consistent with what they've all been looking like so far. Not too bad. <laughs> all right, let's take a look at all four here on the passenger side together. So, as we can see, pretty consistent. They're all pretty clean. There's not a lot of black gunk, which would indicate either a number of things, but it could be blow by or burning oil in a cylinder. And, something like that so they all look pretty good 
Let's go see what the other side looks like. Well, I just had a, a really cool guy just come over and shoot the shit with me about the truck a little bit, and he offered me to give me some stuff to be able to use for the plow on the front, which would be cool if I ever choose to plow with it. Uh, gotta love other Mopar people. So here's the plugs. Really uh, pretty clean all the way around, very consistent. They're all looking about the same, which is good, what you want to see. The number three over here has a little bit of oil. You can see on the uh, on the threads a little bit more than the other ones, but not totally a cause for alarm because the, the tip still looks pretty good, for what I can imagine at least. So, so far it looks like it's checking out as far as uh, the way it's running. All right, so now that we've checked out the spark plugs and that they all look all right, we're gonna try for testing for any sort of vacuum leaks around the carburetor with some carb cleaner and uh, we'll see what that looks like. Hold crank up, see what she does. Cold. We're getting a jump. And it looks like we're gonna turn over. All right, we got her up and running. I'll let her uh, warm up here for a few minutes and then we shall see if we can evaluate if there are any sort of uh, vacuum leaks and take from there. Alright, so doing the carburetor test. 